Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about a 1988 film called The Malagra Beanfield War. This is the Kino Lorber edition. It's a film that is directed by Robert Redford. It was his second film. His first film was 1980's Ordinary People. And Redford obviously had a gigantic uh, success, especially at the Oscars with uh, Ordinary People. So he waited eight years to make another film, and this is uh, Malagra Beanfield War is a film uh, very much different than um, than ordinary people, and this is set in the in the West. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of outdoor scenes. Uh, Redford loved that area of the country. It's set in New Mexico. It was uh, the the adopted from a book by John Nichols uh, that Redford really loved. Uh, the novel had been in uh, different hands, uh, production companies, uh, for quite a few years before Redford came on board with it. <clears throat> and the uh, studio wanted to star, and I don't know where he would have placed, uh, had been placed in this movie, but um, uh, he, he, this was the movie he, he just wanted to direct, as he did with Ordinary People. The story concerns a small town called Milagro. It's in New Mexico, the mountains. Um, Milagro means miracle. <clears throat> uh, the, the film has a, a uh, healthy dose of uh, magical realism, which was a very, uh, uh, very uh, all current uh, kind of uh, phrase in the 1980s. Um, it's the story of a, it's a kind of David and Goliath story. It's uh, uh, this small town is being uprooted by a developer who's coming to build a resort and, um, and uh, the people are promised, oh, you're going to get great jobs, but as we see behind the scenes, they'll probably all have to move away because their land will be so valuable, they won't be able to pay, pay the taxes on them. <clears throat> so it's very much a uh, kind of an anti-capitalist movie, or at least in the sense that the ties between politics and capitalism, the power that comes that um, that uh, causes a war because uh, Joe, the main character in the movie, who is uh, uh, can't find work, can barely make enough money to support his wife and children, small children, and he owns this bean field, but there's no water. The water rights are hold, held by this corporation, and. It, sanctity of ownership uh, he he, uh, in, he invades that sanctity and he takes water to grow beans in his ancestral uh, uh, bean uh, fields so this is seen as an act of war uh, the company sends a, uh, a, a kind of renegade loan agent uh, to come and try to uh, to uh, convince Joe <clears throat> in whatever way necessary uh, to end this kind of uh, um, uprising against the power of the corporation. Um, so we have, we have kind of, we have the sense of the community and the sense, it, it's, it's kind of like a, a Capra movie in that, uh, you know, we are fighting against the bankers or you're fighting against political power uh, and and we have the lone person willing to uh, willing to sacrifice, and will the community support him? All this plays in. It's very, really a, a, the ending, very very reminiscent of Capra, and very rousing kind of ending. Um, as I said, it had magical realism quality to it. Uh, the the reviews when the movie came out, the reviews were negative. Roger Ebert said that they they never were able to. Uh, um, to make the two sides of it seem like two different movies. One movie was this magical realism fable, and the other was kind of a documentary on the encroachment of of, uh, of small town. Uh, and this is small town, New Mexico. So it's it's Chicanos, Hispanic uh, inhabitants, and <clears throat> uh, but of course this was happening all around the country. So it was a very and it was a, a, a you know it was manufacturing was leaving. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, small towns were uh, in, in rapid decline, and there were those that sort of accepted it and those that thought that it was well worth uh, uh, 
keeping the heritage of, of your ancestors alive, as, as some of the characters, uh, some of the villagers in Milagro have come to believe. Um, but the, the, and even though I think Roger Ebert's criticism is uh, valid, it's, uh, it, it, I, I think that's true. There is, this is not a great masterpiece. But with that kind of conventional criticism, thumbs up, thumbs down, ratings and such, kind of obscures the virtues that exist in the film and the things that the film does well, any film, but especially Milagro Beanfield War, because there's so many, there's so many aspects of this movie you know, 34 years down the line <clears throat> that kind of make that kind of conventional criticism uh, not even all that, that doesn't seem all that important in, in the way that audiences didn't respond to it, uh, critics didn't respond to it. And certainly uh, one of the main reasons would be the cast Jones played by Chick Venera, and uh, he also uh, is uh, par part of the uh, commentary. Um, but it, I'll just mention some of them. Uh, there's there's a, there's a tremendous amount. Reuben Blades plays the sheriff who tries to play peacemaker between uh, two sides. Uh, he's really good. Sonia Braga, who has uh, had been in the Kiss of the Spider Woman and uh, veteran uh, uh, Brazilian actress. And she is the one who uh, wants to defend Joe and uh, and keep the heritage of the village alive. Melanie Griffith is in it. Uh, this is the same year as Working Girl, which is the movie that kind of propelled her to, to stardom. Uh, she doesn't have a, a large role here, but she plays the wife of the uh, of the chief investor in this uh, in this resort project. John Hurd. Uh, he he. Uh, is a refugee from the cultural wars of the 1960s, a lawyer who had defended progressive, um, uh, uh, progressive movement issues in court, and uh, but it's become cynical. He doesn't believe the town will ever agree to. Uh, they'll they'll just fight amongst each other. They won't be able to, to unify. So New Braga tries to convince him. Otherwise, he he runs the town newspaper. And uh, he's, he's sort of the mouthpiece for the author. Is, the author of this novel is John Nichols, who had um, a similar attitude towards the idealism of the 1960s, which had, by the end of the Reagan era, had certainly dis dissipated. Daniel Stern comes to town. He's a sociologist. Uh, he's been given a grant uh, to study the, uh, the uh, ways of this uh, ancient <coughs> community. He's very lively, very uh, adds a lot of, of uh, oomph to the movie. Christopher Walken plays the, um, he's the henchman that comes uh, to uh, clean up the mess, uh, the kind of lone wolf kind of guy, but he's really good in this. Even though he is ostensibly the villain, I think he is, uh, he, <laughs> I mean, Christopher Walken always has uh, uh, moments in a movie that are just sort of like, he can really uh, take over which he does in this movie. The mayor of the Malagra is played by Freddie Fender. Freddie Fender was a uh, bilingual country singer. And uh, Chick Manera in the commentary says, between him and Ruben Blades, there was always singing and songs, being uh, music being played, songs sung on the set. And lastly, I'll, I'll mention one more. The governor is played, and even though he's not in the opening credits and he's way at the end of the closing credits, the governor is played by M. Emmett Walsh, and uh, he's uh, a governor that is, you know, siding with his uh, supporters and rich, wealthy supporters. So he sides with them trying to put down this uprising, but then the uprising gets out of hand and he sees the political realities. The perfect little small role, he's only in a couple scenes, but they're pretty, uh, they're, they're uh, very entertaining scenes. So we have a fantastic crew. We have great uh, scenic beauty. It's photographed by Robbie Greenberg and his camera operator was John Toll who would go on to win Academy Awards. I think Legends of the Fall, I think it's one of his, his biggies. And I saw Conrad Hall as a camera assistant. I, Conrad Hall is one of the great cinematographers of that era. This was his son working on the set. They, um, Dee Dee Allen played the, or Dee Dee Allen uh, did the editing, and of course she is also uh, a legendary uh, editor and certainly um, the uh, 
the reason that uh, Milagro Beanfield War is never boring. It's always, it moves along at a really good, swift pace. And then there's Daniel Grusin, or Dave Grusin, who did the music, and he won the Academy Award for his score for Milagro Beanfield War, so it did get some recognition at least. And um, it's a, it's a tr tremendous score. Again, the, uh, there's a commentary with Chick Venera and Daniel Krimmer. Uh, Krimmer uh, knows everything about 1970s, 80s movies. He, he, he really uh, gives you a great background. And uh, then Chick Venera also uh, gives you some really good stories that uh, occurred in the filming. He said it was a very happy shoot. Um, like I say, songs and, and music, and everybody got along with each other. Everybody sort of knew each other from other projects. Kramer also uh, makes a point about uh, Robert Rifford's directing career. He directed nine films, uh, this being his second, <clears throat> and his, uh, his great big hits, uh, uh, The Sting and uh, Butch Cassidy, were with, uh, uh, were with um, Paul Newman. Newman also became a director. He directed, I think, six movies, uh, and I think uh, I, I think Redford did nine. And he he was mentioning about how uh, how an interesting comparison could be made between the two uh, directing styles of two actors that were so well attuned uh, to each other in the films they made together. Um, and of course, Redford had a much uh, much more success, at least, especially with his, his first film. But uh, Newman made some really good movies that are kind of under the radar, kind of movies that I'd like to revisit, including a movie from a Ken Casey novel called Sometimes a Great Notion. So overall, you know, I, th I find this uh, movie, you know, terrifically entertaining, if nothing else. Uh, and, uh, and it also includes some uh, some actors from Mexico that were veterans and some of the older characters are played by, and, and they're also superb in this movie. So that'll about wrap this one up. Uh, thanks again to everybody who uh, stuck with me this far. Um, I always appreciate it. Any comments would be welcome. If you've ever seen this movie, it's becoming kind of a cult movie uh, through the years, uh, and, and I'm glad to see that. Um, other than that, you guys take care. I'll catch you next time.